So tomorrow England are playing Wales at Twickenham and it's a very interesting game for a number of reasons and I'm going to cover that in this video. G'day and welcome to Inside Rugby. My name's Mark and if you haven't joined me here before, welcome. If you're a loyal supporter of this channel, thank you very much for doing that. Remember to help me out by just hitting that subscribe button. That's all it takes, folks. So we're getting closer and closer to the Rugby World Cup. We're less than one month from kickoff on the first game between France and the All Blacks. But this weekend, all attention turns to Twickenham for the mighty clash between England and Wales. Of course, we had Wales beating England last weekend by 20 points to 9 at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff. But this weekend we return to the home of English rugby to Twickenham and that incredible stadium in London. And I'm sure we're going to see a really interesting game between the two teams. Lots of changes on both sides as expected. And I want to talk about that first because I think there's a bit of a strategy going on here from both Steve Borthwick and Warren Gatlin. Start off first with my Kiwi brother Warren Gatlin and what he's up to with Wales. And I think you'll probably agree that since Gatlin's been come back into the fold, Welsh rugby has started to sort itself out and he seems to bring a very positive energy to that group of players and they seem to be heading in the right direction. I think a lot of the old guard leaving has probably done Gatlin a bit of a favour as he can rebuild this team and bring some youth and inexperience in to rebuild Wales for not only this World Cup but for future World Cups as well so that's been a good thing. Now I think Gatlin has a strategy over these couple of weekends and in particular these games against England and that strategy is to find out who his key 23 are going to be and last week we saw a team that has around about 11 or 12 changes to this week's team that's going up against England. And I think this is significant because Gatlin wants to get to that game against South Africa and then the next week against Fiji and really having his top team in place. And I think that's what he's aiming to do. So win or lose against England tomorrow, I think what Gatlin is really going to be looking for is making sure he's got his top 23 cemented in his mind as he heads into those two last warm-up games. And I think against South Africa and against Fiji we're going to see the number one Wales team come out as he tries to build combination with that team heading into their first round game in Pool C in the World Cup. And for me that makes a lot of sense for Gatlin to do that. He's one of the uh, coaches that's naming his team pretty much later on before we get very close to the World Cup and he's doing that so he gives himself a good opportunity to see everybody play in these couple of games. Now there are some players that have been left out of these two warm-up games and as he said in the press conference recently that it's going to be pretty hard for those players to play their cells back into the rugby squad for the World Cup. So you can pretty much take it that the team is going to be selected on players that played last week against England in Cardiff and who are rolling out this week against England at Twickenham. And I think after we see that, we're going to see their A team being announced, as we call it, to play against South Africa. So good, uh, good opportunity there for Gatlin. He's also changing the leadership roles. Last week we saw Jack Morgan as the captain. This week, Osprey's Dewey Lake gets the opportunity to be captain of Wales, which he was told on Monday while he was sitting on the physio bench. And uh, a pretty good time to be told that you're going to be captaining your country as they run out on Twickenham this weekend. So a lot of changes for Wales this weekend and we see Joe Roberts and Nick Tompkins in the centres and I think this is going to be an interesting pairing. These two guys aren't on the biggest side of being centres but I think they can break through that England line and cause them some problems. So I'm particularly going to take notice on how Roberts and Tompkins go in the centres this weekend. Josh Adams is coming in for his 50th cap and uh, he's had a bit of a resurgence in his career as well. He went over to the Premiership, found his mojo again and Warren Gatlin's been talking about how he's been very impressed with Josh Adams. Of course he scored the most tries for Wales in the last World Cup so Gatlin and crew will be looking for Josh Adams to be running into 
a good streak of form as they head towards this World Cup as well. Another standout selection for me that's going to be interesting to watch for Wales this weekend is Plumtree at number 8. Of course he has some Kiwi heritage but it's going to be interesting to see how he goes and Gatlin's giving him an opportunity to, to shine. So all in all it's a good Wales team. I don't know how they're going to go against this England squad. It's going to be pretty interesting. I think if they hold in there in the first half and England don't get too much of a run on them. I think Wales can definitely win this game. Um, but we'll have to see what England brings in that first 40 minutes. I think that's going to be key to this game's outcome. Now let's have a look at Steve Borthwick and see what he's done this weekend with his team. The first thing I should mention about the England team this weekend is Courtney Laws is going to be celebrating his 98th cap. And uh, he's going to his fourth World Cup this year and he's been talking about wanting to give the performance of his career to his team and country as he starts to head towards retirement. So Courtney Law's running on for England this weekend at Twickenham. Billy Vinopono is back and this is really exciting as well. I like this guy at number eight. And of course there's that well documented issue that he's had with Steve Borthwick, a bit of disrespect and uh, seems as though those two have kissed and made up now and everything's right between Billy Vinopolo and Steve Borthwick. So Vinopolo comes on this weekend and I'm really looking forward to him. He's a damaging player from number eight, both defensively and offensively when he gets running. So let's hope he uses a lot of that ball for England this weekend. Of course, Iron Farrell is back in at number 10 and we're gonna see either him spreading the ball wide or we're gonna see a lot of box kicking from the number 10, a lot of strategic kicking from England in the beginning. I suspect that's the way we're going to go. In the first 20 minutes or so, we're going to see England try to put Wales under a lot of pressure with high balls and um, also strategic kicks in play that allow England to get on the front foot and put pressure on Wales. I think that's the way England's going to play this game. It may bore some of us, but they're going to be looking at continuity and making sure they have a game plan going into this game against Wales. So England have selected Arundel and Daly on the wings. Those two should give them a lot of speed and go forward. And uh, that's going to be interesting to see how they go. In the centres we've got Lawrence and Martian who are up against those two Welsh lighter weight centres. So it's going to be interesting to see if those guys can dominate in those positions in the centre. So I think the English backs are going to have an option to be able to either run the ball or use strategic kicking. I suspect they're going to do the kicking part for the first 20 or 30 minutes of this game and then just see how the game opens up or not from there. I think the other important part of this game is going to be when the benches are used and what impact they have on the match as well. And I suspect that Wales might be a little bit lacking in this area. So if they haven't got a healthy lead by 60 or 70 minutes, I think England are able to chase this game if they find themselves behind in the last 20 minutes or so. Genge is coming off the bench for England and making his 50th cap, so that's another milestone in his career. Good player and suspect that he's going to be making a difference for England. And Ito is also in there in the forwards for England as well. So they should secure enough ball from set pieces and from the mauls and breakdowns for England to be able to use that ball. It's all going to depend on how they want to go ahead and do it. Coming off the bench in the second half, we have Ford and Malins that may make a difference for England in the backs. And uh, once again, I think this is going to be a situation in the first 20 or 30 minutes of this game. We're going to see the two forward packs going at each other and trying to dominate and create some supremacy through the forward play. And I think the referee needs to look out a little bit for the scrums in the first 20 or 30 minutes. I think it's going to be a little bit messy. There could be some di discipline issues. And don't be surprised if we get a number of penalties that end up in penalty goals in the first 20 or 25 minutes of this game. So let's hope the referee can sort out the scrums and we don't have too many problems there that start to take away from this particular this game, game. Let's check out the poll I put up on the community tab on this YouTube channel and see what you thought as far as who was going to win this game. And a lot of votes came in, and as you can see, 62% of you think Wales is going to win this game compared to the 38% that think England's going to win it. So that was very interesting. So I am picking England to win this game, but very narrowly. I think if they do get home, it's going to be one or two or three points. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if Wales back up their win against England from last weekend and win again at Twickenham. 
Either way, I think Gatlin's going to get what he wants this weekend. He's going to want to see this particular team, see how they go, give those players an opportunity to put their hand up for selection. And as I said in the beginning of the video, it's all going to come down who, to who gets selected for Wales against South Africa next weekend. And I think that's going to be the number one Welsh team we see going forward. So a really interesting run into the start of the World Cup. Fiji are going to be that dark horse in Pool C for me. And for Wales to be playing them as their last warm-up game, I think that's going to be a very significant game in these warm-up series. So there we go, England versus Wales at Twickenham tomorrow in London. I'm picking a short win by England, one or two points in it, but wouldn't be surprised at all if Warren Gatlin and his team get over the top of England and have two wins in two weekends. Let me know what you think in the comments. Always look forward to your comments. Are there any other standout players that you are expecting to see from either England or Wales this weekend? Give me a note on those and I'll keep a good lookout for them during the game. I'll be back after the game with a full review and let you know what I think of the game and how it went down at Twickenham. Until then, stay well, stay safe and enjoy your rugby everybody. And don't forget to tune in again to Inside Rugby. See you again soon. Bye for now.